Bamboo is chopping boards, flooring laminate. It's lawsuits in suburbs when it grows under people's fences. Across Asia, it's everywhere from chopsticks to skyscraper scaffolding. To my Balinese grandmother, bamboo was the bed she was born on. It's the house she grew up in. It's what her cremation pyre was made of. And bamboo has been used in daily life this way for literally tens of thousands of years across the tropical regions of the world. There are islands, even continents, first reached by bamboo rafts. But with the exception of just a few Chinese books, 2,000-year-old Chinese books, just about everything that was ever built out of bamboo is gone. That's because unprotected bamboo weathers. Untreated bamboo gets eaten to dust. So most people think that you couldn't be poor enough or rural enough or, frankly, dirty enough to actually want to live in a bamboo house. What would it take to change their minds? to convince people that bamboo was worth building with, much less worth aspiring to. My team and I, we build almost entirely with bamboo. Of the 1,450 species in the world, we use just seven. It's a wild grass. It grows deep in the ravines of Bali and Java. Each shoot emerges from the ground full diameter, going up as much as a meter a day. If left unharvested, each pole will die within 10 years. Often, it's cut young for short-term use. We select the three-year-old bamboo. At just three years old, it's fully mature, with the tensile strength of steel and the compressive strength of concrete. You can literally slam four tons straight down on it, and it can take it. Dendrocalamus asper, or patung as we call it, is long, up to 18 meters of usable length. That makes it possible to build a six-story house. It's also light, because it's hollow. Light enough to be lifted by two men, or apparently, one woman. <laughs> it's round, curving, tapering. It's the opposite of a two-by-four, and this is what makes it a nightmare for conventional architects and for logistics. Imagine getting those poles up out of the valley, down the mountain, sometimes under cover of darkness to avoid traffic and the authorities. <laughs> and then we have to get it around the corner into our workshop, past our neighbor's family compound. We build the house out of big, long poles, but the rest of the house is made out of itsy-bitsy little splits. Skilled hands literally weave the house together. The million-dollar question is, how do you weave it tightly enough to keep the air conditioning in and the bugs out? What we do is based on the skill of Balinese craftsmen. Add to that some pioneering architects and a few other people crazy enough to have believed this was possible. We are a team. In conventional construction, it's about 40% labor cost, 60% material. For us, it's inversed, 60% labor, 40% material. It takes a lot of hands to weave that house. In conventional construction, the architect makes periodic site inspections. Our designers move their desks to a shack on site until that building is done. Bamboo may have been around forever, but the way that we're working with it, it's a whole new world. We find ourselves drawing furniture on the ground and then building it. The tried and true, well-crafted formulas and vocabulary of architecture do not apply here. So we had to invent our own rules. And those rules, they're pretty basic. We watch the sun, avoid the rain. We work with gravity, the contours of the land, and the skills of our people. We ask the bamboo. So bamboo, 
What are you good at? What do you want to be? And the bamboo says, respect me, protect me from water, and make the most of my curves. We learn from nature. We listen to bamboo. Here's a builder. He's measuring the structural blueprints of the house. That's the structural blueprint. Here we are blessing the land, because that's the way we do things in Bali. We have a barefoot office. If the applicant I'm interviewing next Tuesday is uncomfortable taking her shoes off, forget about it. Never mind the office, it's a barefoot construction site most of the time. Our first house needed a door. And we thought, why are doors usually rectangular? Why not round? And we asked the doors, we said, doors, what challenges do you face? And the answer was, our hinges, they battle with gravity and gravity always wins. So if you need to make peace with gravity, why not pivot on the center where it's easy to balance? Yes, I find myself talking to doors. <laughs> Hobbit doors. And that reminds me, people often tell me I'm living in a fantasy land. They say Avatar, Robinson Crusoe, sometimes spaceships. I relate best to Alice. Wonderland is an upside down world full of absurdities that somehow do make sense in the end. A visiting architect marveled at our avant-garde bathrooms. This one is a basket in the living room. And then there I am, Googling Japanese ladies' modesty noise machines in the middle of the night. <laughs> With innovation comes challenges, questions, concerns. This person was concerned. She said, stunning. I found myself wondering how sturdy they are. Brought the tale of the three little pigs to mind. So it is literally a house made of grass. I'll give her that. But let me tell you, no huffing or puffing will blow these houses down. <laughs> Here is a bridge, also made entirely of grass. Our engineer came to test this bridge. Old school style, he brought 140 engineering students and they all stood on the bridge together. So I thought that's a pretty good sign off. What I'm about to show you is a four bedroom, six story private home. Is this what came to mind earlier when I first said bamboo house? Here's the living room. The furniture is made out of bamboo, too. This is a hammock on the balcony of a third floor bedroom. Here's the house from below. Here it is from above. What I think of when I look down at this house is the 3,200 bamboo poles in it, the 100,000 hand-whittled bamboo pins, and whether or not we erased all the pencil marks. <laughs> I love this house. But what it really comes down to for me is the feeling. Some people have called it the luxury of being connected to nature. And I'm interested in that. I'm interested in the perception of luxury. A diamond's value is strategically engineered. Then there's the tragedy of ivory. There's something about the connection between luxury and scarcity that really bothers me. Maybe it's because I'm afraid of things running out, of the basic things that we need running out. Even as a kid, I used to go around putting water bottles into toilet tanks so that less water would go down with each flush. I'd read a book called 100 Things That Kids Can Do to Save the Earth. Although, in those days in Bali, our water was hand-carried up from the spring, so this was quite a direct concern. <laughs> but 
But what we get to do is we get to make beauty and value and a sense of connection out of a wild grass that grows in our backyards. Bamboo may not be for everyone, but the thing is, there's enough bamboo for everyone. To the American who wrote to us, worried, there's more than enough for the pandas. <laughs> One of our lead craftsmen, Ateng, he needed to rebuild the Balai Daja, the pavilion which is a ceremonial heart of his family compound. And he wanted to rebuild it out of bamboo. At first, his mother was not so impressed. But I was delighted when she, a Balinese village grandmother, was convinced and allowed it. And now I hear their neighbors call it retro-trendy. <laughs> when the Green School was founded here in Bali eight years ago, which is what inspired us and got me into this mess, they had to live up to the name and build it out of something green. They could have used up all the recycled timber from the surrounding three islands. That would have counted. But instead, they thought, what have we got a lot of? What can we promise the kids that they will not run out of? You can plant a seedling today, be harvesting mature timber in seven years, and then continue harvesting every year for the rest of your life. These buildings, they're a promise to the kids. They're the promise of abundance. They inspire innovation. Just five years ago, I had no idea that any of this was possible. But we've chosen just one humble material, and we've made a whole new world. Thank you.